Hey folks, welcome to Dragonfly Projects on Homestead. My name is Alex and this is my Kubota L4060 compact tractor. I've now owned this tractor for a little over a year. It has just shy of 90 hours on it. Let me talk to you about our decision process to acquire this specific tractor and the likes and dislikes I have about this specific tractor and changes I would make if I had to do it all over again and if I'm still satisfied with this machine. Spoiler, still very satisfied. Let me first talk about how we ended up acquiring this tractor and the thought process behind uh, our decision to go with Kubota. And then I'll walk you around the tractor and show you everything that's specific to this tractor and what made us decide to take this tractor. First things first, this is a Kubota L4060. I do believe it is also called the Grand L series. 40 represents the horsepower and 60 represents the model number or the version number. Um, the range for this tractor is from 35 to 60 horsepower, so either a 3560 or a 6060. This specific tractor in our region is very, very, very popular for snow removal services. It is a great size, has a lot of nice features. It is very powerful for its size and does the job very, very well. So I guess the main question is why Kubota? Uh, in my region, basically, usually when they say for a tractor, your best bet is not necessarily the best tractor, but the best dealership because you will need to get it serviced. When something breaks, you will need parts for it. And you have to have confidence in your dealership that they can fix that for you. So there were three options in our area, Kubota, John Deere, and Coyote. Before I moved here, I was dead set on getting a Coyote because, sorry for the poor analogy, but it's kind of like the Hyundai and Kia of the auto world, where they're just a hair under Honda and Toyota, but you also pay a lot less. Now, this might not be completely true anymore because they've come uh, fairly far recently, but the Coyote is older technology. Um, it gives a bit more features for the price because it's trying to attract customers to come and buy their brand. The downside is the dealership was about 30 minutes further away than the Kubota dealership. For John Deere, personally, these are my beliefs. Um, there, you might have heard in the news that John Deere is trying to fight the right to repair for certain farmers where farmers are not being given the option to repair their tractors themselves. So I don't really support that. So for me, John Deere was out the window. So our two options were basically Coyote or Kubota. Uh, they had similar tractors, similar sizes. The Coyote was always a little bit cheaper. The downside is when I bought it, I was in the middle of the COVID shortages. The dealership I bought this from had this tractor in stock on site. The Coyote for the equivalent tractor, I would have been third in line for the tractor and they didn't even know when they were going to get stock for that tractor. I was shopping around end of July, beginning of August, and I really, really, really need the tractor for snow removal in the winter just to clear my driveway. So I could not risk having to shovel by hand last winter. So in the end, I went with the Kubota, which was in stock. The upside of Kubota is they also do their own financing and I was able to finance the implements and the tractor at 0% financing versus the Coyote who would only finance the tractor itself at 0%, but you had to put a 10% down and you also couldn't finance the implements at 0%. So financially for us, because we're in the middle of renovations for the house, going with Kubota also left money in my pocket to do renos. So it was in stock, it was available within two weeks and it left money in my pocket. Now it is a bit more expensive long term, but the Kubota holds its value very, very well. And the good thing is the further it goes, this is a 2021 model. If I was to trade in for a bigger tractor, I would almost never be under value wise. So the tractor would always at least be worth what I have left to pay for the tractor. So I never lose money with this, which is the upside of good agriculture equipment or good construction equipment. The Kubota keeps its value very well. So this is why we went with Kubota. Now, why the 4060? Basically, I didn't want a subcompact tractor because I needed a front end lift capacity to move 
some trees around. I really wanted a cab because for the snow removal and my allergies or the bug season, I didn't want to be bothered by that. So I needed a cab. So the cab model, it had to be small enough to be able to go in the woods where it's tight access, but big enough that it could either skid trees for me or have enough lift capacity to pick up uh, logs to eventually put them on the sawmill. So the 4060 uh, was the one I ended up going with. If budget had allowed, I would have probably went with the 6060 because the 6060 has about 2000 pounds of lift capacity while the 4060, you can see here, uh, loading arm 805, 805 kilograms it can lift at the pins, which is here before your attachment, all the way up. So this can lift over 1600 pounds at max capacity minus the weight of the attachment up front, whether it's the bucket or the forks. So this is good enough for me. The 6060 would have easily handled 2000 pounds, but budget wise, it's give or take. This is a very rough estimate, but every horsepower is about $1,000. So the 4060 was about $40,000 while the 6060 was about $60,000, which was slightly above my budget. And uh, to get the zero percent interest, you had to go finance over five years. So that's quite a sizable payment. But again, for us in our situation, completely worth it. So now you guys know why we went with Kubota and why I personally went with the L4060. There was also an MX series that has the similar size tractor, but there's a couple differences. The gas pedal for the HST transmission in this model has a different heel toe model. It's not two pedals front to back. It's one pedal that rocks forward and backwards. So you can actually move your foot. I'll show it to you once we get inside the cab. So I find it a lot more comfortable. This one by default comes with two rear remotes. So if you want to control both functions of your snowblower, so the left, right, and up, down, you need two remotes. This one had it stock. Uh, it had other features like um, stall guard and auto throttle advance, which to be honest is not completely necessary, but they're nice features to have. They call this model the HST Plus transmission because it has a low, medium, and high range gear, but it also has a slow and fast mode for every gear. So technically it kind of has six gears. Without having to shift from medium, low, or high, I can shift from fast to slow, which is quite convenient if you want to make micro adjustments on the fly. Now let me bring you guys in nice and close with the tractor uh, and I'll talk about some small things that either we added as a bonus or nice things that I'm happy that this tractor has and we'll go in depth about this specific tractor. Now you'll see I sometimes get confused. I, I, I name things wrong. I'm fairly sure the thing that goes on the back is an implement and the thing that goes on the front is an attachment. I'm sorry if I confuse them, but just so you know, when I purchased the tractor, by default, it has no implement. It comes with a front end loader and a bucket, but those are not included in the price. So when you out the door, when I bought it, they had to be added again. The only two options I added were the air suspension seat and the third function on the bucket. So if we come closer, this bucket, and I think all newer tractors have this, they have what we call the skid steer quick attach. Very easy to change attachment. Lift pins on both sides, pull out. As you see, there's a lip here. You just pull out of that lip, change something, you get back in, and then the pin sits in the bottom here. Very easy, very convenient to switch. Now for us, I paid to have this installed by the dealership. This is the third function. So this bucket has up, down, uh, dump down and curl up. Now this is for something like a grapple where I want to open and close my grapple. This is where that third function comes in handy. And you can see it was routed by default from the dealership. Here are my hoses for my third function. The only downside is I feel like those hoses are extremely vulnerable to anything that goes underneath the tractor because we can see here there is an aftermarket plate you can buy to protect that and I will probably end up buying it but it is quite pricey so I'm just being very careful whenever I drive through brush that I make sure that this side is the side that's the safer side and the other side has no hoses sticking out. 
you can see here on the front remove the front guard pull this little tab here pull the tab and the hood opens battery is nice up in front there's a couple of screens here you have to make sure it stays clear once in a while so the detractor doesn't overheat same with this here for your radiator and your condenser for your air conditioning because yes the tractor does have air conditioning which is amazing you can watch i've done the first service on this tractor included an oil change an oil filter change and the hst transmission filter change there's also a um, hydraulic fluid filter that needs to be changed eventually and boy this filter is nice and cheap but the hydraulic fluid filters are quite expensive uh, dipstick for the oil and everything is nice and accessible on both sides I'm quite happy with this slap it back down and this locks back in place beautiful the thing I wish I wish it had LED lights to be honest the price we're paying I don't think putting in LED lights would have been a big 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 expense for them same with the scene lights there's a total four of them to the front to the back they could have easily been LED lights they, they, they don't they're not that bright and honestly when you have a front-end loader in your tractor these lights are kind of useless there's also a engine block heater for when it's nice and cold for me last uh, winter this tractor only refused to start once and it was about minus 25 degrees celsius ended up plugging that in for two hours and then it started no problem so that was quite nice we keep going around one thing i wish i had done from factory when i bought it is get filled tires um basically they fill the back tires with a liquid it adds around 800 pounds for my tractor because this tractor is plenty strong for me usually what the problem is it's not heavy enough whatever i'm trying to pull or push or try to wrestle around if this tractor is not heavy enough the tractor gets lifted the front end loader has enough power to do it but it lifts the tractor before it lifts the object so if you're heavier then you have a bit more uh, wiggle room to try and bully whatever you're trying to do on the back here i replaced the lights with some leds much much brighter much better uh, these are just princess auto special uh, i could probably go a bit brighter but what a great improvement turn signals um, this is what happens when you brush against trees sometimes it just popped the cover off and i ended up shredding it in the snowblower but that's not a big thing here on the back the three-point hitch this is a category one tractor it has the pto the power takeoff that gives power to your rear implements in this case this is my eichlin 3501 skidding winch so these are the rear remotes there's two of them there is an option to add a third if you want these are basically like your hydraulic functions up front so the rear implement here if it's the snowblower i can plug two sets of lines and then one of the remotes will control the rotation left and right and the other one will control the up and down of my snow chute. quite convenient there's plenty of grease points everywhere this is where you fill your hydraulic fluid and your dipstick for your hydraulic fluid here is your windshield washer fluid there is room here if you want to add a little toolbox would probably be convenient to add it at some point the good thing about this three-point is you can extend slightly the end of your three points so if you're just slightly off you can just extend it pick it up and as you move back into place this is going to snap back into place so you don't have to do micro adjustments all the time with the tractor same for the size it can swivel a bit left and right to make it a lot more convenient to change and implement on your own i do want to either get something like a quick attach adapter or there's uh, types of hooks that you can install there the name escapes me right now but they're quite pricey but basically instead of being a pin that goes through your attachment point it's a hook that hooks up so you only have to put the pin through the top part here so it's a lot more convenient another great feature that i like that the coyote didn't have is the fill port for the gas is on the side here oftentimes for these tractors it will be somewhere on top of the hood which makes it awkward and easy to spill some diesel that will ruin your paint so it's just here on the side 
very convenient, very easy to fill, and it affords a lot of spills. This is the antenna for the radio that if you want to connect to the tractor, by default, there is a radio added to the price list. It costs about $500, so I opted not to have it installed. I figured I could install it myself for much cheaper. And to be honest, at the end of the day, I usually have ear protection and I'm playing music through that ear protection whenever I'm using the tractor, just because if I'm using it for extended period of time, it just gets annoying and the noise becomes quite um, bothersome. You'll notice there's a 65 pound dumbbell right here because the problem with the air ride seat is at least now for now I don't know how to bypass the dead man switch. That means if my butt is not in the chair, I can't leave my PTO running, which is not convenient for my winch. So right now I can take this dumbbell, put it on there, turn on my winch and the, sorry, turn on the PTO and it won't shut off automatically when I step off. If you have the regular seat, you're able to just tip the seat forward to let the tractor know that you're not sitting there but you know you're not sitting there this is a safety feature in case the tractor flips that the pto stops especially if you have a mower a brush cutter in the back or something like that with giant spinning blades that could be dangerous so on this side here is your brake left brake right brake right now they're linked together you can unlink them it's useful sometimes if you have to do a tight turn you just log the inside wheel and you'll have a tighter turn radius this is to engage your parking brake this is to control the angle of the steering wheel if you want to move it. So if you press, you're going to go back up. Here I was talking about the HST Plus. HST Plus, Rabbit, Turtle, usually I leave it in Rabbit. If you want to slow it down, just flick it down and it's going to slow down your, um, your speed. On the side here, the selection for four-wheel drive and two-wheel drive. I try to leave it as much as I can in two-wheel drive. It's a lot nicer to my grass. But if I need a bit more traction, I just pop it down. Here's your gear selector for high, medium, or low range for the gearbox. If you press this pin down and keep it down, it's going to lock your rear differential. So it's going to give you a lot more grip, especially if one wheel is spinning when you're on two-wheel drive. Usually I'll go from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive, and then if I'm really stuck, then I'll lock the rear differential. This thing that you turn decides at which speed the rear implement drops when you're dropping it down. Here is a pedal I was talking about. The regular Kubota pedal has uh, forward and backwards rocking. This one you can also rock, rock back and front, but usually when I'm pressing the gas and I'm pressing on the side here, and if I'm gonna go reverse, I just move my foot like this. I find it a lot more comfortable than trying to rock up and down. So this is one of the main reasons why I went with the Grand L series. Even though it was a bit more expensive, this was much more comfortable for me. If you have a light on the top of your uh, tractor, like a, a beacon light, if you're doing any type of road work, you can press this if it's activated. This is to set your cruise control. This is to cycle through your displays. This is the Auto Throttle Advance. Basically, if I set my engine RPM to 1500 and I'm asking more gas than 1500 would give me, the Auto Throttle Advance will increase my RPMs to match what my foot is asking. So I don't have to play around with the engine RPMs all the time. This is for the Regen. This does have a particulate filter uh, for the diesel engine. So once it's full, it'll ask to Auto Regen. Basically, it means it'll sit there for X amount of minutes running at full spin to try and burn off everything that's stuck in the filter. The other good thing is let's say you're doing something that's quite intensive like uh, brush cutting and your engine is running at max, it will do an auto region at the same time so you don't have to always stop and do one because usually when you're doing something intensive with the tractor and the region is on, you'll probably have to stop doing what you're doing because it is using a lot of the engine power just to burn uh, whatever is in the filter. Hazards, horn, um, these are your signals, left, right, and your front headlights if you have to. If you look up, this is where the radio would go, which I don't have one. Lots of vents, lots of vents everywhere for defrosting, for keeping you cool. This is a small interior light if you want it. Uh, unfortunately, there's no door function. I wish there was one. This is your filter for your AC. Here is your rear wiper, front wiper. 
you press it once it goes you hold the button the juice comes out here's your ac and hvac functions temperature recycling the air inside the tractor ac which is a godsend most of the time and the speed of your fan and this is the rear defrost but it also includes the side windows which has anything that with the lines has a defrost which is quite convenient these side windows also open if you just want a little breeze which is quite nice it's present on both sides both doors open which is quite nice usually i exit on the left side because there's no joystick here if i look on my right engine speed so slowest to fastest usually the engine has to be spinning around 2500 rpm for the pto at the rear to have its 540 rpm which is usually the speed that it likes to run at this is to lift and lower the rear um, three-point hitch these are the rear remotes so if i want to activate in my case my snowblower chute this is to rotate it and this is to go up down and if i want to switch them i can just switch the connections that won't be a problem this is where i start the pto at the back press and turn activates it twist and it deactivates it if this is on and i get off my seat and there's no weight the rear pto will stop as a safety feature there's also a 12 volt uh, cigarette type plug adapter if you want to plug something in and here are the lights for the back and the front the scene lights now usually when i'm doing snow blowing stuff i want to play with my hvac um, i'm always looking behind me so i wish some of those controls were down here because when i'm trying to see what i'm doing and i'm looking behind me and i want to just get the the windshield wiper going then i don't want to have to turn around all the time because it gets a bit annoying every window opens whether it's the back window sometimes it's nice if you're trying to see exactly what you're doing and every little side window opens and on the left side there's nothing there's also this lever here if ever for some reason you want to lock your rear implement in a position you can put it from unlock to lock which means it won't move this is uh the joystick for the front loader so up down curl down curl up if you put in the float function it's gonna hold sorry yeah. curl up curl down down up float basically it's gonna follow the surface of the ground you can do two functions at once so up and curl so if you go diagonally but the hydraulic pump on this tractor is not very strong so if you do two functions at once it's quite slow sometimes it's just faster to just do the function you want and then fix it and here is the adapter for the third function i had installed so press it on if you turn it on it turns green and then here you can activate your function so grapple open grapple close and then if you want to flip the the connections then it would be the opposite if you want to turn it off you turn it off there's also a small button here if you hold this button it puts your rpms at exactly max so let's say you're trying to pick up a big big load and you're at 2000 rpms and it's not lifting it uh, fast enough you can hold that button and really uh, increase the rpm so that's your hydraulic pump is working at max capacity and then you'll have max lift capacity whenever you're holding that button and here's the panel you can cycle through a couple options so i'm at 86 hours right now with the tractor um, i'm averaging 2.8 liters of diesel per hour and so far i've used 248 liters of diesel so that's quite a bit of money uh, the rear pto speed usually like i said 2500 is your 540 rpm for the back uh, there's no gearing to change the speed of your RPM on the PTO in this tractor. And then HSE Stite. I am not sure what this screen serves as a purpose because there's no need for it. Uh, so my particulate matter filter is full at 49%. So in, once it hits 100%, it's going to want to do a regen. Or if I'm doing something intensive like snow blowing or brush cutting and I'm going at max RPMs, then this will burn off slowly, which is quite convenient. And then the maintenance screen, if you hold it, oil was changed in the last 31 hours. And then you can see everything that was done. And it tells you when it's due. And for now, nothing is due. So that was a walk around of the L4060 Kubota tractor. Um, 
So we've had it for over a year now. It's been crucial for us, especially in the winter, just for the snowblower. We have around 150 feet worth of driveway. I would never be able to do that by hand. Even with a little snowblower, it would take forever. I don't have a UTV with a front plow or an ATV with a front plow. And even then it would be asking a lot. We get quite a sizable snowfall here and it'd be a lot of driveway to try and plow and push back inside of the road. The brush cutter function has been a godsend also to try and maintain, especially now that we have the Christmas tree farm. It is a lot of land to maintain quickly. It's very uneven and rough and there's a lot of tree stumps still. Um, the poor Cub Cadet mower will never be able to do all of that. Plus the meadow that we're trying to mow and everything. So this has been crucial to us being here. Uh, it's very practical, it's been very reliable. Obviously it has barely any hours on it. This is a great machine from what I've read. They're very reliable, they're very strong. They rarely go wrong, knock on wood. Like I said, a couple of things I wish I had done. First off, get the tires filled while I was still at the dealership because now I have to pay a bit more if I want them to come and fill up the tires. So maybe I'll wait to see if it's really crucial. It would be nice. Usually I just leave an implement on the back to make sure I have a counterweight and the winch serves a nice purpose because it's so compact and it weighs around 600 pounds. So at least I have that going for me. Uh, this tractor can lift a thousand pounds on the rear uh, three point hitch. It can tow safely around 6,000 pounds. This tractor itself weighs around 5,000 pounds, if I'm not mistaken. So you can move it using a half ton pickup truck without going over the capacity. Obviously, it uh, depends on the weight of the trailer you're pulling, but at least this is only 5,000 pounds. So if your half ton pickup truck can tow 10,000, then usually you're still within your limits. Now, what do I have so far? I have bucket and front forks for the front end loader. I would love to have a set of, uh, or a grapple, not a set, just a grapple, either a light rule grapple or a grapple. The thing is, the heavier the grapple, the less lift capacity you have. Uh, it'd be very crucial for moving piles of brush and loading logs in the future sawmill. That'd be very, very, very nice eventually. For the back, we have the winch, which was indispensable after the big storm we had just to bring all the logs out move everything out of the way uh, if there was a tree snagged up in another tree and it's a little precarious and dangerous very easy to just stand back and pull it out of that tree uh, while you're sitting at a safe distance we have the snowblower obviously 74 inch snowblower which is amazing i can clear the whole driveway or at least good enough for me to go to work in about five minutes so that's very nice the brush cutter went with a five foot, which is about the same width as the tractor, just because the rows here don't really play well with six feet for the brush cutter. And the bigger it is, the harder it is on the engine. So I didn't want something too big for what is still considered somewhat of a small tractor. I would love to get a box blade for the back. I would love to get a wood chipper and eventually a stump grinder just because there's so many stumps especially in the christmas tree plantation in the area where i want to start adding more trees i would just love to create that space get rid of those stumps and then it would make it a lot more friendly for a regular mower versus a brush cutter to keep the weeds down now at the end of the day am i still satisfied with this tractor absolutely no question no doubt in my mind would i make the same purchase most likely I'm not sad that I didn't go with the 6060. Honestly, the monthly payment I have on this guy already is quite significant. Let's just say I could afford a very nice car, a very nice truck if I decided not to have this. But it's hard to say no to 0% interest. If you have land and property, not having a tractor is kind of hard or it would make a 10 minute job a five hour job. Whether it's moving piles of dirt, moving logs, clearing stuff, uh, mowing, cutting, if we didn't have the tractor, not all of my trails would be open, so I can't enjoy all this, all of this land. Um, coming next maple syrup season, I'm gonna use the forks with one of the pallets. I've now bought big blue um, barrels, uh, food, food grade, so that we can dump the maple water in those barrels. They can more easily um, carry uh, all the water back to where I'm boiling it to make it a lot easier. So there's always new things I find I can do with this tractor. It's super reliable. 
eventually I would love to build a little um, little shed for it so it doesn't have to sit under the weather all the time. I try to park it under one of the trees, which is why it's covered in pine needles, just to make sure it's not under the sun and in the rain all of the time. I try to take good care of it. I try to grease all the joints whenever I can. It says every 10 hour for the front end bucket and every 25 to 30 hours for everything else. I just make sure everything's happy, everything's moving nicely. Uh, check the oil once in a while. I am using synthetic oil now. Actually, it's more like it's the only one I could find. But uh, I've had great luck in other pieces of equipment with the uh, Rotella shell oil. So I'm very happy to use that. Maintenance is everything. I try to keep it as well maintained as I can because I want this tractor to serve me well for the next 20 years. Um, I see now, though, why people are saying sometimes it's nice to have two tractors because I've just spent so much time putting the uh, winch on there. And if I want to brush cut, it's going to take me a while to get that off, put the brush cutter on, reset it, and then go do something to come back. If you're brush cutting, you don't want the front end loader because it makes your turning radius a lot bigger and you can't get in as many tight spots. If you're winching, then you probably want the forks on the back and you want to counterweight so you're more stable so you can put your bucket down or your forks down as you're um, winching, which gives more friction and resistance because the winch can pull more weight than the tractor weighs. So sometimes you need that extra weight on the front to just to help you out. And it's always, I guess, a bit of a hassle removing stuff and changing it. But all in all, very satisfied my purchase. I would do it again in a heartbeat. The size is perfect for us. I would love a bigger tractor that could lift more. But if I want something that can still go in the trails and in the woods, then I can't go any bigger than this. Would I change my mind and I save a couple bucks and go with the MX model, about the same size? Maybe, I'm not sure. But like I said, I make the payment work. Maybe in two years, I'll regret paying so much per month. But once it's paid, it'll be all good. And to be honest, I'm very satisfied with it. Hopefully this video was helpful to you guys if you're on the fence about buying one of these tractors or not. Um, usually every tractor in this category, whether it be Kubota, John Deere, uh, Massey International, Coyote, Mahindra, they all have good offerings. Uh, as an example, the Mahindra, my head didn't fit. I kept banging my head on the ceiling, so that wasn't out for me. Absolutely was a no-go for me from the get-go. Um, but go out there, talk to your dealers, Try the tractors, try to see if there's some friends that have the tractor available to you so you can try it out. Um, compare the stats, compare the prices, see what matters to you. Try to see what's available, um, the supply chain, how quickly you can get parts if you're down. I know my dealer, if I have to, they can come to me and repair stuff. Obviously it's more expensive, but then I don't have to find a way to get my tractor to them because driving my tractor there, while not impossible, would probably take me about two hours. Um, if I had to, I'd do it. But if they have the service that they come to me, then that's a much better option for me at this time. What about you guys? What did you end up going with? Do you own one of these tractors? Is there some stuff that surprised you? Some stuff you're disappointed? Some stuff you're very happy with? Let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Mm -hmm.